Jin and Jess, welcome in, although the topic today is one that is very serious in New Zealand. There is far too much bullying in this country at every level. There is bullying from politicians. There is bullying on Maori issues and transgender issues. And I mean from the people who do not like people questioning their stance. And now we find in our schools there is rampant bullying of our young. So that's why I wanted to do this interview with you as well as to help Summer. Jin, Summer is your daughter. Tell us about the school she is at. What school is it? And what were her early days at this school like? So she started at Pakaringa College at the beginning of this year. Uh, um, and right from the first term, actually, it was just after school camp. Uh, um, she had made a friend and she had a falling out with this friend at camp. Uh, um, and then since that, there, this girl started started to make threats towards her. Um, and so I had spoken to the was the dean um, the first time, and she said, "Look, this girl's on daily report. Uh, um, we are in touch with her parents quite a bit, so we will have a chat to her parents about what's going on, and, and we'll make sure that it's left." Uh, um, what then, sorts, Jin, what sorts of threats? And just tell us all what daily report means. So um, she had been told that she was going to get jumped. And so I guess the terms of getting jumped is getting bet up. Uh, um, and with daily report, it means that the teachers are aware of the student and she's already in trouble with teachers or other children in the school. And she's got to check in with, uh, um, the deans every day. Okay, so this girl was already seen as trouble. But is this getting jumped? This is not something that was there when I was at school ever. Was it around when either of you were at school? No. You no. never had this. What does that mean? You mean they, they will come in numbers and yeah, physically yeah. assault? Yeah. yeah. So it is, a, it is a crime. It's a crime to assault another human being. It is, yeah, yeah. And how how did Summer react to that early threat? She was scared. And so she had come to me uh, um, and she said, Mum, I don't know what to do. This is what's happening. Uh, um, and so I said, well, this isn't okay. And so we went and spoke to the dean. Uh, um, and then the dean said that she would be in touch to let me know how things were going. Um, however, I didn't hear anything more from the dean. Uh, um, and then it was probably a month or two later that another girl who was friends with the first initial girl um, started making threats towards my daughter that she was going to jump her. Uh, and so I again went and spoke to the deputy principal this time. I actually emailed him and he said that um, he came back to me and said, look, this is all sorted. I've spoken with her and she's going to be fine. Nothing is going to happen. Um, and then, yeah, it all stopped for probably a term. Uh, um, and then it all started up again. Just, uh, it happened. She got, yeah, she got better. Yeah, the 20th of October. Yeah, yeah. of October. So um, a month ago, she got better. Uh, she um, got beaten up, and and what yeah. what what happened, Jess? You're you're her aunt. Yeah. Can you tell us how you've come to be involved? Yeah. Well, Summer and I have a really close relationship, and um, earlier in the week, Summer had messaged me to say that um, you know, things were not going well for her at school, and so I went and picked her up, and we spent some time together, and she shared some stuff with me, and um. You know, I could tell she was really struggling. I just happened to be away the exact day that she got beaten up. Um, but, I mean, I'm a nurse and, you know, beating someone around, like putting someone defenceless on the ground, two girls against one, much bigger girls than um, Summer. Um, she's like, they're punching her in the head get her onto the ground and they're punching and kicking her in the head and as a nurse I mean 
that's a whole nother level to like you know a little schoolyard scrap or something like that that's like brutal brutal assault and you know if she'd been kicked in the wrong place she she might not be here now this um so shocking Jin is this how old how old are the girls in question what what um, age they the two girls that assaulted her they were 14 um 14 and my daughter was 13 at the time is this based on 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 jealousy, on trying to control Summer and she won't do exactly what they say. What is their reason for doing it? Or are they just completely incapable of controlling their impulses, these girls? I think part of it is it's a kudos thing if they attack other people. They become the strong people. And I think they just pick on people who are weaker than them. Uh, um, And so that I guess they just saw her as a target. Part of it, the um, apparently the reason behind these girls beating her up was there was another girl who thought Summer liked her ex-boyfriend. And so this girl asked these two girls to jump Summer because of it. Now, um, I, I don't even like the term jumped because it should be called what it is, the crime of assault. It yeah. is an assault and jumping somehow makes it less serious how serious Jess getting back to you as a nurse how serious were her injuries this little 13 year old girl well she um we took her to the local A&E and she was diagnosed with a head injury from an assault and because she was having blurred vision dizziness um no. All that kind of stuff. They referred her on to Middlemore Hospital. Um, so she had a CT scan at Middlemore Hospital. Um, and and they also, you know, reiterated that it was a head injury by, via, an, uh, via an assault. Um, and Summer's still um, got the ongoing physical effects of that concussion to this day. With what? With headaches? With with headaches, with blurred vision. Her this the the right hand side that she got kicked in the head on. Um, her hearing is not as good as it was. But what about the emotional flow on Jin? Can you talk about that? What has that been like for this young girl? Uh, it's it's really been a roller coaster. Her, um, her confidence has been knocked. She hasn't been, oh, she's only done two full days at school since. Uh, um, she, during lunchtime, she can't do lunchtimes because it's just too much anxiety. Uh, um, she's just too scared to be around people. Uh, um, and then she hasn't been sleeping properly at night. Uh, um, yeah, it's just. She doesn't want to go anywhere by herself. Yeah. She's scared of even being at home because the girls know where she lives. Mm. And there's been ongoing threats since the beating. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's been scary for everyone. And I've been staying with Jen and Summer and Michaela for what well, I did for a week just as an extra adult for support um, because the girls were threatening Summer with another beating and that next time she wouldn't, quote, see the fucking light of day again. And then this that they is would horrendous. I just have to stop yeah. you there. So they did this to this 13-year-old, two 14-year-olds. What on earth were the police and the school doing? Surely the police were called in straight away by the school to, no, to charge they these girls with assault. No, they didn't even call Jen in to tell her what had happened. This is horrendous. You need to take the country through what happened. All right. How did you how did you find out, Jen? So Summer had sent me a message and she said, Mum, I'm not feeling safe. These girls are threatening me again. I've been to the deputy principal and he spoke to or he he said to me, Look, I need to go to class. Um your dean knows about what's gone on in the past, so go and speak to her. And then so Summer went to her office and she said to Summer, you've got the wrong socks on, 
I don't like your shoes and your skirt's too short, so I'm not going to have this discussion with you. Go back to the deputy principal. The dean and, said this. Yeah, yeah. Can we can we name this woman? Um, Mrs. McKay, I think it's Colleen. Colleen, Colleen McKay. McKay. Why on earth would Colleen McKay say that when a girl has come to her scared and needing help? I have no idea. And especially when Colleen knows that these threats have been ongoing throughout the year. I mean, it's not just a one-off isolated event that someone's come and talked to her about. Um, she knows the history, but she didn't want to know. Have you been into her office since? I haven't been into her office since. When, and when I did speak to her the first time, it was just in the hallway. Um, it wasn't in her office or anything. It was, yeah, just in the hallway at school, uh, um, outside the, um, yeah, the school office, I guess. And what did you say to her? Um, so oh, that was the initial time at the beginning of the year. And right. I, yeah. I um, would have been right in her office, Jen. How did you, how did you hold back from uh, a, a woman charged with keeping children safe at school doing that dereliction of duty colleen mckay if you wish to talk to me please write to me liz.gun at freenz.org but this is where bullying is allowed in this country bullying yeah. happens when somebody does evil and then weak people and i have just been through this myself mm -hmm. weak people looking the other way looking yeah. the other way with they know wrongdoing is going on and yet they don't want to stand up and say to the bully, you are wrong and I'm going to stop you. This yeah. is a, an absolute plague across our land. Mm. Yeah. Colleen and McKay, I would like to talk to you as Dean, but that should be reported to the headmaster or headmistress. So what happened as far as you going to the school, Jen? So I turned up at the school. Um, I said to Summer, as soon as I've finished my job, I'll come straight to the school. Uh, um, and then, so I finished my job and then I headed to school and I was on a phone call. I, I'm pretty sure it was, it was to me. Jess yeah. at the time. But to me, I thought it was threat still. I didn't know that anything had happened to her. And I sat on the phone for about five minutes talking to Jess in the school car park, not knowing that anything had happened. And then I went into um, into the school to sign her out. And, um, and then the deputy principal walked up to me and he said, I have Summer in my office. And so I, um, I followed him back to the office and Summer was sitting there and I still had no idea. And, um, and he just said, there's been an incident. And I, I said, well, what do you mean? Uh, and he said she was attacked. Uh, um, and then he went on to, he asked Summer to move out of the office and he showed me video footage of what had happened. And I was just Wait a minute, shocked. had the girls had, some other students had filmed this? Yes, it had been filmed awful. by multiple students. Were... We have seen five, um, five different angles of, I haven't been able to watch them properly, uh, um, but in the principal's, in the deputy principal's office, I watched it, but kind of also zoned out a little bit at the same time. What uh, state was Summer in sitting in that office, Jen? She just looked like she was in shock. She, was she bleeding? Could you see where she had been hurt? No, because it was all to she she curled up into a ball and it was all the and back of her. yeah and covered her face and it was all pretty much the back of her head and um and neck that they were punching and kicking. This <laughs> is absolutely unacceptable. Yeah, what kinds of monsters are these girls, <laughs> and what kind of monster is is the is the deputy principal for not ringing a parent immediately and saying this is urgent and getting her straight to hospital yeah. so yeah. Jen, were you were you furious at that moment or were you as you said numb shocked? yeah I was just in yeah. shock I didn't know how to respond I uh, um yeah I just got summer and we we left I don't think I really even said anything 
more to the deputy principal, he he said to me, I recommend you go and contact the police um, and that you get her checked out. And I, I, yeah, I was just in so much shock and I just got summer and we walked out together and we went straight to the police station um, and straight to A&E and they referred us through to the hospital. We'll get to that in a moment. The name of the deputy principal, what's his name? Kreezen Kandasami. All right. I would like to talk to you as well, liz.gun at freenz.org. Was there any empathy from him? Did he seem to care from your story? It feels as if he lacks the basics of humanity. What, yeah. Was there any kindness, empathy towards you as a mum or towards Summer as an injured young student? No. Yeah, no. he just he just seemed quite factual this is what's happened uh, um it's best for you to contact the police and get her checked out and that was yeah that was pretty much it that is absolutely unbelievable that a school deputy principal is not calling in the police and yeah, having yeah. and having the two students in his office then and there yes. it makes no sense this no. will only grow bullying in this country into a mushroom cloud of, yeah. of human dysfunctional behaviour very young. So what did the police say? Let's go to that step, Jen. Um, so I went to the local police station and made a report. They, um, and pretty much they were closing up uh, um, just after we got there. So they took a quick statement and said that because it was a long weekend that they would process um, the paperwork on the Tuesday uh, um, yeah. and we will hear um, after that. So they also, another layer of, of lack of humanity, lack of real care. They, they yeah. were more interested in going away on their long weekend than caring for a young girl. Yeah. yeah. What has happened to our New Zealand society? And so I know. What what did you do? Did you you then took her home and you took her to the hospital? What was the care like there? Um, we took her straight to A and E and we waited for oh, it was three and a half hours to be seen. Um, and then from that we got seen and then told you should take her through to the hospital to get a CT scan done on her head, uh, um, and so that they can check her out a bit more thoroughly. So we went from there to the hospital uh, um, and they we got seen a lot faster at the hospital uh, um, and they took us through to a room after about 15 or 20 minutes of arriving uh, um, and just started doing tests on her and we got discharged at about 3.30 uh, um, the next morning. And and what was this young girl, this beautiful young girl, Summer, what state was she in through all of that elongated she, trauma? She was just exhausted, exhausted, and I think still just pretty numb and shocked from what had gone on. It's, yeah, it's really, yeah, it's taken, it's taken a massive toll on her. Mm. Jess, at what stage were you called in? You said you were away. I was away. Um... Jin contacted me on the Friday when, when they were in um, the, not the hospital, the, the local A&E, um, and I came back the next day so that I could help support Jin and Summer and Michaela. Um, and, yeah, I guess, yeah, I just, I, I guess because Summer was still getting while she was sitting in the hospital, getting threatened by these same girls in the Pakaringa College group chat, um, you know, saying that they're going to knock her mum's teeth in, that when they do round number two, she's not going to see the fucking light of day again. You know, this is all ongoing while she's waiting in the hospital to be seen from, in the A&E, sorry, to be seen from, a brutal assault that they'd already done and so I mean it was scary and and we we knew that these girls know where we live um so 
it was just, I mean, just here, Jin just sent me a video. She said Summer's being beaten up and she sent me a copy of the video. And I honestly, I just burst out crying. Like nothing prepares you for seeing your own flesh and blood just beaten, lying defenseless on the ground, just beaten and just with like no disregard for human life and no one stood in to help her no. or she she everyone was just standing around filming and she was just there and then she walked off on her own a girl started to walk with her and then turned around and walked the opposite way and, and they're all applauding applauding and saying you know clapping and um no. you know encouraging because it started out as a conversation um and but the girls had obviously told all their friends what they were going to do because everyone was videoing this conversation. And why would you video a conversation if you, if if it's just a conversation? And so you can hear in the videos them saying "hooker, hooker," and um, just like encouraging the girls to start punching her. And then you know they're all cheering and clapping. And at the end, when Summer gets up and walks off, that they're, they're clapping. And, yeah, it's just disgusting. It is absolutely shameful what is going on in this country. There is a really dark underbelly in New Zealand. And yeah. until these sorts of conversations are had and we face it and we make really stringent, um, really stringent punishments is the only word I can think yeah. of. The Get minute... It a child does this to another child, that child should be taken out of the school by the police and held to yeah. account. So yeah. take us now, this makes me so angry. Take us now to what happened from the school with the police, I presume after the long weekend. Well, you didn't get anything from, from the school over the long weekend, Jin? No, no. I how is saying, how is, how is our student, how is she going? I'm so sorry this happened. Nothing. No, and I um, sent an email over the weekend to um, yeah. to the deputy principal, and so did I. Yeah, and so and did so you. did our dad. Yeah, her granddad. And um, and also, did some of stepdad send? No, it was just us three. Yeah. Uh, um. Yeah, but um, the response that I got back from the email, it was it was poor. Uh, what was they, it? They pretty much uh, um just like didn't acknowledge a lot of what had actually happened. Uh, um and they also they yeah, I had asked them a few questions and I had asked them about their bullying policies and procedures in the school and that was completely ignored. I didn't get any response to that. Uh, um and then he yeah. just he said the safety of our students is paramount. And oh. so, you know, and and he said Summer did come to me that day and say she was threatened. And I spoke to the girls and those girls defied an instruction. And it's like, well, if if somebody's been threatened earlier in the day, and what they should have been suspended right from the the word the of the threat from the threat Absolutely. not wait and and you know the Kreese and Kandasami said to summer oh well you'll be safe because there'll be teachers out monitoring not one teacher witnessed or viewed or saw summer's assault and there's probably probably in the video there's probably 30 or 40 kids standing all up on the balcony like surely a teacher would wonder why there's a crowd of kids you know, all cheering and whatever. I mean, I and then we, yeah, he, they we said, well, we were the teachers, and he said, well, we don't have teachers to. We don't, have enough, we don't have enough teachers to monitor everything. Um, this is well, just this is just a shocking state because a lot of parents now are taking their children out of schools altogether. Yeah. They are yeah. homeschooling in New Zealand because not just the the assaults on children, the bullying, the the lax, poor standards of many yeah. of the teachers, but there's the whole sexualization of children. So 
parents mm. across New Zealand are saying, I don't feel my child is safe in, in yeah. a New Zealand public school. Mm. What happened as far as the headmaster? Did you go right to the headmaster, Jin? I did. This, this deputy who'd shown that he doesn't care. What did you do? So I had also emailed the principal as well at the same time all of us did uh, yeah uh, um as emailing the deputy and I heard back from um the principal I got a phone call from him uh, um apologizing on I think it was the Wednesday uh, um so, yeah saying that he had he hadn't been at school for the last few days uh, um or well, he wasn't at school on Friday and then he wasn't at school Monday was a public holiday, and so I think it was a Tuesday. He also wasn't there, and pretty sure it was the Wednesday. I'm sorry, Jin, but what an utterly pathetic excuse from someone meant to be a leader. He yeah. himself would have seen, if he was online, what yeah. was going on in his school, and he would have had many, many opportunities to send an email to you yeah. as yeah. the mother and apologising to Summer and asking how she was at the very least. Yeah. What is his name? What is his name, Jin? His name is Michael Williams. Michael Williams, the headmaster yeah. of Packer. Yeah. yeah. All right. And so so you get this pathetic, mealy-mouthed excuse, this series of excuses. Yeah. To show concern for you or Summer or what you've um, gone uh, He He apologised that it took so long for him to get to me. And then he said, oh, he asked how she was. Um, and I said, she's not doing that well. Uh, um, and then he said, I see that you would like to meet with me and your sister has also asked to meet with me. So um, let's find um, a time that suits. Uh, um, and he said he did say that he could rearrange some meetings if need be. Uh, um, but, yeah, we met with him, I think it was. The Monday. The, yeah, the Monday after that, yeah. Uh -huh. He didn't even put everything aside and meet with you immediately in urgency. Well, he did say that he could meet with us sooner, but I had I had to work. Um, I'm a contractor, so if I don't work, I don't get paid. Uh, mm. um, and then and Jess also, was away. Um, my grandfather passed away uh, um, during that week. Oh, no, yeah. the week before. Uh, um, and it was his funeral on the Friday. Um, the girls and I couldn't make it down Um but um, yeah, but Jess um, was heading down on the Friday and I wanted her to have a chance to um, also speak with him. So we made it on the Monday. On the Monday. By this stage, what have you had from the police, either of you? Um, I hadn't heard, I don't think I had heard from the police no. at that stage. Uh, um, I heard from them, I think it was the following Saturday. Uh, um, but the officers that I have spoken to they have been it has felt like or especially one of them in particular he said he had a situation where he was assaulted um as a teenager and so he knows what it feels like to be in summer's position uh, um and he just said if there's anything that you need please feel free to contact me uh, um and um yeah and then since that I've had an email from um another lady asking for um like impact statements and whatnot yeah, um, okay so here we have at last in this this litany of horrors that you've gone through we have one adult who has shown some true empathy one but yeah. the adult is not from the school yet not from no. the school no, this, no. This, this truly is something for kiwis to look at how how we are raising our children, the values being put out by adults who are put in charge of raising children. This is horrific. But here's the key question. What has happened to the two assailants? To the two, if, if they were out of school and they walked up to somebody in a street and did what they'd done in the school grounds, they would have been taken away by the police and locked up it's, overnight. Yes. Yeah. So what has happened to those two girls who assaulted someone. Well, basically, we, we had a meeting with the principal and our dad came to, and the principal tried to fob everything off onto Summer. Um, he said that these girls deserve an education too. 
Um, and so it sort of sounded to us like we were appalled. We walked away from that meeting and we were just so pissed off because it felt like these bullies had more rights than what some of the victim had um, and that, you know, they needed an education as well. And, you know, we asked what's going to happen to these girls and he said, oh, well, we can't tell you that and blah, 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 blah. Um, and so we were just extremely angry after that and that's why I went to the media. I, I contacted you. Um, I contacted the media. I'm like, something has to, I mean, this this isn't okay. I mean, <laughs> Yeah, it's it's disgusting behaviour from a principal as well. And did he show any care for Summer? No, no. And he and Summer was actually so brave, and she came to that meeting even though she was shit scared of going back into that school. And um, he said to Summer that these fights don't happen often and stuff like that. And Summer said, actually, you're lying because this happens all the time. And um, and he said, no, it doesn't. It's an isolated event. And, I mean, I've seen the videos, the footage of other fights going on. Like, the, this happens, like, at least weekly. But he was denying, he was denying that basically any he was just d denying everything and putting it back on onto summer and so we just left just absolutely disgusted and appalled um and we we did actually find out from um the police that after because we went into to that meeting on a mon on the monday morning and the police actually went to the school on the monday at some Absolutely. stage after after we'd been in and that's actually the only reason that the girls got expelled um, was because the police actually went in there. Otherwise, the girls would still be at the school. Have the police laid charges against those girls? And yes. It's, it's the police um, that have to lay the charges. Yeah, the police have laid... Um, um, they've been charge. charged with assault, common assault, um, and the police have been amazing, but the police... Um, they've kind of said that their hands are quite tied, that they've done what they can do and now they have to hand it over to youth aid. And there was sort of like the officer was really like lovely when he said it and everything, but he said probably nothing's really going to happen with these kids um, because the youth aid system is like as shit as the school situations. So. Um, there will be parents watching this nodding in horrified agreement because I know there are other stories. I had a story of a young intermediate girl who was assaulted and the mother went to the mainstream media. They were going to do the story and then they pulled back at the last minute. Tell us about your experience with going to mainstream media. What happened there? Well, um, I emailed like everybody that I could find. I just went on and looked up media. And so I, I'd i noticed that there was a lady that had done a, an article on the bullying that was going on at Howitt College earlier in the year. So I got, I got her direct email, but I never heard anything back from her. And out of the 14 places I emailed, stuff got back to me. Um, and they said we'd like to do the story. Um, and so, I mean, at least that was one good thing that the mainstream media has done. Um, give credit but, where it's due. Yeah. Stuff has been horrendous, but if they did the right it thing has. here, give credit where it's due. Yes, and I need exactly. to say I am sorry. I apologise that I was um, not there earlier than now. No, that's to fine. The story. With the election, it was just so full on. But oh, what I totally happened with understand. The, with the stuff story, what was the reaction to it? Um, it was it was shared in the East Auckland Grapevine on Facebook, and quite a lot of um, the comments were, um, you know, that this has been going on for ten years. Like this happened to my kid, this happened to my grandchild. This, you know, the school just brushes it under the carpet. Like so, it showed us that there's a lot of people that it's happened to yeah. at that school and probably every school, mm -hmm. but in particular Pakaranga College. And um, so, I mean, at least it got out there, but 
one I'll just tell you one thing, Liz. I was quite pissed off because in the in the in the um article, uh the the uh, the journalist went to the Ministry of Education and um asked them for a statement and the Ministry of Education said, Oh, we um we haven't had any complaints. So I sent off like an email to the Ministry of Education um, saying what was saying what had happened and went through everything. And we just got a reply back that was just like the board oh, of trustees, you need to take this up with pretty much, yeah, you need to take this up with the board of trustees. Um, we don't not, deal, yeah, we don't, we don't deal. deal with day to day yeah. running of a school, and I'm like, this isn't day to day running of a school. This is an assault. This isn't mm-hmm. just like maths and English and yeah, okay, I can understand that they don't get involved in that. But if you can't go to the Ministry of Education, who the hell do you go to? It's all of this passing of the buck to someone yeah, else. It is. And it looking is. away from wrongdoing. Yeah. I believe that you would have a case for suing the board of the school. Yeah. And and I believe that um, uh, there may well be a lawyer who will contact us, liz.gun at freenz.org, if you're willing to take this case for uh-huh. the family and, that would and be amazing. sue that school. That would be incredible. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't it? That would be incredible, yes. Yeah. They need, the, they need to learn that it's not okay what has happened. And, and it, it, it would it would be a story that we could really build encouragement to other parents. So every time yeah. this happens, an assault in a school ground, the the school board and the school principal in person should be held account to yeah. account. I believe we should have a yeah. look at the legislation for dereliction of duty for failing in their duty of care. Yeah. Mm. That that is a tort that you could actually take them, and that could go side by side with the police taking it as a crime. Yeah. Are there and the fact that they out were there who would who would take this case, please contact me. Yes, thank you. But the fact that they were even warned that morning by summer that it was going to happen, um, and they just didn't do anything. You yeah. know, like that that's that's just appalling to me. Like at the first sign of like. Some like summer as a kid that doesn't really go and talk to adults. Mm-hmm. So it was a huge thing for summer to go to the deputy principal to say that she was scared for her safety. We know that summer just doesn't do that. So she must have been shit scared mm-hmm. to go to the deputy and then to get fobbed off from the deputy to the dean and then back to the deputy. And then told, oh, everything will be fine. Um, there'll be teachers on duty. You'll be safe. And then that happens. Like, like they should have something should have happened in, or oh, it should have happened earlier in the year when the, when the threats first started. But it Absolutely. shouldn't have taken an assault for. I don't know. I, I guess the school hasn't even really taken it seriously. It was just the fact that the, the police got involved and the school kind of had to take it seriously. But if it was left. If it was left to the school, those girls would still be there right now. Then what would you say now on camera to that headmaster? Who oh, would just uh, speak to him and say, "Is I mean, is he a father? Do we know if he is a father of young young people? I, I have no idea, but the response that I got from him, he, he doesn't have any empathy. Uh, it just feels like this is his job. He's there to get a paycheck. Uh, um, each week and yeah and that's pretty much all he it felt like that's the only reason why he's there it doesn't feel like he cares about mm. this children or their education or, uh, or like the safety like mm. not at all the safety of the children what I would ask people is to write to the local Pakaranga newspaper what yeah. is that newspaper what is it um, it's, it's the Hauk and Pakaranga Times and I did contact them but I never got a response from them at all I would I would love people watching this to write to the Howick and Pakaranga Times and demand that a local story be done on this school mm. and that they come and interview you. They can get your number through me. And yeah. also write to the letters to the editor in that local newspaper. Now tell me, have mm. you been to see your local electorate candidate? Because this is where... I know Morris Williamson used to be the local candidate out there years ago. For years he was there. But but who is your local candidate now? Well, our local, well, 
for gin and pickering it, it's um simeon brown mm. um and then in in our electorate it's um lutzen christopher lutzen yes um I think but, Simeon Brown would be the one because he has this school that is so dysfunctional in his yeah. electorate. I would go and make an appointment and see him and yeah. get back to me and let me know what response you get from him because a, a responsible candidate would then want to see that the local schools are not allowing children to be deeply unsafe yeah. within yeah. His, his candidate area. And yeah. if he well, we'll do that. Off, yeah, let us know how it goes. Yeah. Jin, what is it you would most love to come out of the interview tonight? I just want a change in the schooling system. I want our kids to be able to go to school and be safe. I don't want them to go to school being scared of what might happen that day. They, if, yeah, they, the kids need and deserve an education without fear. It's yeah. It's just not. It's disgusting how uh, um, how the school system is. Yeah, it is disgusting. It's disgusting the the whole leadership hierarchy across government and across uh, the the sort of deputized organizations from government. You know, the Ministry of Education is showing terrible leadership. The school itself oh. is showing terrible leadership. It keeps filtering down from the corruptions at the very top. Yes, what would you like to come out of this interview? Most like to come out of this? I think, well, I want every child to be safe in mm. school. I don't want any other auntie to have to go through what I have been through watching summer getting beaten up. I want I want everybody to know that this is going on. I want everybody to know that the schools don't care. And I want something to change so that it is safe for children to go to school, that it is safe for children to, I don't know, just be able to learn without living in fear. Um, and I want, I also want accountability from the people that should be looking after the children, the Ministry of Education, the schools. It just feels like there's no accountability whatsoever. So I want accountability for, yeah, the whole education system. Um, it's it's yeah. disgraceful. I won't ask you two to say this, but to those two girls, if you watch this interview, I tell you this, when you do such grave wrongdoing to another human being, that will come back around to you in another form in your mm -hmm. life. It's called, in some languages, it's called karma. But mm -hmm. when you do wrong as you have to summer and you have not put it right and come and said sorry and owned up to the evil you've done, you will suffer many, many times over what summer herself has suffered. That's my message to those mm -hmm. two ghastly bullies. Their mm -hmm. lives will be blighted by their own wrongdoing their own evil. Yeah. I won't ask you to say any comment to them, but I would ask you, how how is Summer now? Is she schooling at home? Is she, I know you said she's still having trouble with headaches and, and blurred vision, Jin. Yeah. How is she? Um, she's still struggling. She's We pulled her out of the school and we have put her into another school. Uh, um, and the other school has been understanding of the situation and that it's not easy for her being back in a school environment. Uh, um, so they have agreed to take things slowly and that she can work her way back up to full days at school um and then yeah just, and then hopefully going back to school normally um as any other child would but um it's yeah it's, she's not sleeping well at night um headaches blurred vision it comes and goes so sometimes it's fine other times it's not and her hearing isn't great. yeah her hearing's not the same as what it used to be either uh, um and then yeah she doesn't like going out and about she she doesn't like going places on her own she used to be very social and her weekends she would be with friends and whatnot and she's yeah she's barely gone out since 
And well, I think also it's the it's the emotional, like there's, there's the physical stuff, but there's huge emotional stuff that she's dealing with. And, you know, some of the coping mechanisms that she's using to deal with that are, are horrific. And But that's how she feels she, you know, yeah. But it, it's not just a physical toll that it's taken on her. It's a mental and emotional toll as well. This um, this has been this has been as harrowing as I thought it would be. In fact, in many ways more so. Um, we really need ideas in the thread to this interview, constructive ideas from people. How can summer be helped? Uh, I have a very dear friend who's an osteopath, and I know that can help with head injuries. Mm. Um, if you would like that, what, what would the people of New Zealand suggest for summer? And mm. what other Kiwis have gone through this and come out the other side? And what are the ideas you suggest, not mm. only for this family, but for this country? Mm. How do we deal with such terrible paucity, lack of good leadership in our schools? I think that headmaster, the vice headmaster, and the deputy should all be sacked immediately by the Ministry mm. of Education, immediately, mm. and shamed and never employed again in education. I agree. What else, what else, yeah. How can we support this family in New Zealand? Would it help if we raise some funds for you, Jin, for, for summer, to be able to have a holiday with you? That would be amazing. Um, and even just stuff with her changing schools, I've recently become a single parent, uh, um, and just she needs... Uh, iPad because they um she used a laptop at Pakaranga, but at her other school they use iPad. So at the moment she doesn't have a device um for school. I had enough money to get her uh, um a, one school shirt and she's got a skirt, but she needs a jacket and another school shirt and a PE uniform. Uh, um so and shoes. Yeah, mm -hmm. her shoes yeah. are getting holes in them, so she needs another pair of shoes. And that's even just the day-to-day -day stuff like that. Jen, it feels to me as if you also are in great trauma along with your daughter. Would that be fair to say? Mm. Yeah, it's, it's, mm. it's been really hard. <laughs> I, I'm just trying to take things one day at a time and support her as much as I can and my other daughter as well having to my other daughter's 11 and having to see all of this and what she's going through and yeah it's, it's not easy I just I just uh, I just can't bear what has happened to this New Zealand I cannot bear what kind of a country we've become but please New Zealanders watching this Will you show this beautiful family, this aunt, this mother, this daughter and, and the little sister and the dog, will you show them what we really are, New Zealand? Please, will you put money into the account that we will put up as this interview finishes? Jin and Jess, please give some of my love and tell her that whatever happens now, we will be there for you as a family. Keep us in touch with what is going on. Um, any money that comes into this account, we will put straight across into your account. And may the love that is still in this country restore your faith in some humanity. It's certainly not in Pakaranga College, but it is in this country, I still believe. Please keep in touch with me. Let me know how you and go. Thank you. Thank you, Liz, for what you've done. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank um, you so much for your time and yeah, yeah, just listening and yeah. And taking us seriously on and showing some empathy. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I feel really honored to have been able to talk to you both. You're amazing, amazing, brave women. And um, please give Summer a big hug from me. Thank oh, you. We will. Thank you. Thank you.